want to hear a story, Chris? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> They, uh, the Ledbetter family, they uh, they lived uh, about a mile north of town, and uh, they were very quiet. Uh, they would come to town once a week, and uh, in in their truck, and uh, do some grocery shop shopping, and then go go home. But uh, one day, the city hall caught fire. And lo and behold, while the people were standing outside and waiting for the fire engine to come from another town, the Ledbetter truck came roaring through town and went right into the front door of the city hall, smacked the door down. Ma and Paul Ledbetter and Daisy May got out and they were stomping the the flames and the boys took their shirts off and they were whacking away at the flames and they extinguished the fire. And the mayor and the people were so grateful that they passed the hat. And when the mayor gave the money to Paul Ledbetter, he said, uh, Mr. Ledbetter, thank you so much. May I ask, what do you plan to do with the money? Mr. Ledbetter said, well, I think the first thing I'm going to do is take my truck to the garage and get the brakes fixed. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in a way, Samuel, our Old Testament lesson. Can you hear me okay without the mic? I, I hate to stand in one place. Samuel was putting out a fire when he went to Bethlehem. Now, Samuel was the last of the judges of Israel who judged for over a hundred years from the time of the death of Joshua to the anointing of the first king of Israel, Saul. Judges ruled Israel. And Samuel was the last of the judges. Now, Samuel had anointed Saul to be the first king of Israel. But Saul did not obey God. He disobeyed God, and Samuel knew that he had made a poor choice. God knew it as well. And God said to Samuel, I want you to go to the city of Bethlehem. And I want you to select one of Jesse's sons to be the new king of Israel. Of course, Samuel obeyed. But he was fearful that he would be killed by Saul. So he went to Bethlehem and he said to the people, the people said, what are you doing here? And he said, I am here to offer a sacrifice to God. He didn't tell them that he was also in Bethlehem to choose the next king of Israel. But God told him to choose one of the sons of Jesse to be the next king of Israel. And so Jesse had his sons Stand in line. And the first one to come forward, I need to get these names right, was Eliab. Now Eliab was a tall man and he was good looking. 
And Samuel <laughs> thought to himself, surely he is to be the next king of Israel. God said, no. He's not the one. The second son stood forward. Abinadab. Abinadab. And again, Samuel said to himself, he's the one I am to anoint as the next king of Israel. And God said, keep looking. Son number three stepped forward, and God said no. Number four stepped forward, and God said no. Number five stepped forward, and God said he's not the one. Six, no. Seven, no. And finally, Samuel is frustrated. He says to God, well, who do you want me to select? Seven fine young men have come forward, and you have said no seven times. And God said to Samuel, you are looking at their appearances. And that's what people do. You are looking at their appearances how they look, how tall they are, how good looking they are, how strong they are. I look into the heart. Boy, that's powerful. And it's so powerful. It's one of my favorite passages in the Bible. I look into the heart. And then Samuel said, Do you have any more sons? Samuel could have said, I'm just about sunned out, but instead he said, Yes, I have one more. But he's out taking care of the sheep. Well, Samuel said to Jesse, he said, Bring him in. And in came literally the runt of the litter. David. And Samuel took one look at David and said, he is the one. He is to be the next king of Israel. And he took out some oil and he anointed David as the next king of Israel. And you all know the story that uh, he played the harp, and he fought in the army, and so forth, and then Saul was killed in battle, and David did become the next king of Israel. Have you ever judged a person based on his or her appearances? Have you ever misjudged a person based on his or her appearances? I think we all have at one time or another. And you know, we, we, we need to remember these words of, of, of God speaking to us, looking into the heart rather than the appearances. David was selected by Samuel, and God told him to do so. And if you read the first chapter of the book of Matthew, you will see that Jesse, the father of David, is listed there in the genealogy, the ancestry of Jesus. Selected by God. I uh, I think we put too much emphasis on beauty and height and the like. 
Now, certainly, you know, the Bible tells us that we are God's temple and we're to practice self-care. 1 Corinthians 16 says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit and we are to practice self-care. We are to take care of ourselves. But I think in our society, there's just so much emphasis on looking perfect, you know, looking like a model or looking like Mr. America or, 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 or Miss America. I, I glanced at the newspaper yesterday and saw that the Miss Universe contest is going to be in Miami. Who cares? <laughs> Actually, if you want to look really great, something very important you have to do. Something important that we have to do. We have to choose the right parents. Did you get it? <laughs> you had a big choice in that, didn't you? I went to Fan Appreciation Day, my wife and I did at uh, uh, Gator, the Gators, and they won last night. Uh, it's going to be a long year. <laughs> they can only beat Kentucky. But uh, we were getting autographs on <clears throat> the defensive lineman, and I looked at this one fellow, and I said to him, I said, what do you bench press? And he was, he was a little hesitant. He, he wasn't boastful, but he said to me, he said, that around 420 pounds. And the guy next to him, I said, well, how about you? Yeah, around that, you know. I thought, okay, you guys are out of my league. I'm not going to ask any more questions. But we put so much emphasis on, on physical beauty, and, and we don't put enough emphasis on cultivating our souls, our, our spirit and how we relate to one another. <laughs> I was in a bicycle accident about 23 years ago and I, I really got banged up. Uh, I was like uh, Ledbetter, you know. I was going down the hill trying to put on my brakes and uh, uh, I didn't crash into a door. I crashed as a result of some gravel. But they took me to the hospital and blood all over my face and they doctor cleaned me up and then he said, now, I'm going to give you some stitches. I'm going to put stitches in your uh, face. And uh, he said, but I want you to understand that after I do this, after I put in the stitches, you're not going to win any beauty contests. <laughs> and I said, doctor, I didn't win any beauty contests before I had my accident. So just go ahead and do it. God looks on the heart. Our society doesn't. Yeah. I think our ideas, our goals, our achievements, our humor, our love, are caring. That's what's important. Not how we look. And it, it's sad because we today seem to be polarized as people. We think in terms of we, they, rather than us. I think of Ferguson, uh, Missouri, <coughs> where a young man, Michael Brown, was shot and killed by a policeman. And I see the demonstrators who are apparently demonstrating against the establishment or demonstrating against the 
police force claiming police brutality and saying, hands up, don't shout. And people who are <coughs> spending money to the demonstrators and to the family, the sad family of Michael Brown. <coughs> and then there are on the other side, demonstrators, anti-demonstrators who claim to be supporting the police force and the establishment and the like, and people are sending money in support of the anti-demonstrators and <coughs> the policemen who may and I think will be brought to trial. And two entirely different camps, instead of looking at the real issues of the haves and the have-nots, and the racial issues that are seen that divide us. But instead, we're in two camps throwing words back and forth, condemning each other, rather than looking at the real problems, the issues that we face in our society. can't pick up a newspaper or turn on the TV or the radio and not hear about uh, Ray Rice. Ray Rice was a running back. He played for Rutgers a few years back. and Running back for the Baltimore Ravens for number 27 and at the game on Thursday night when they played the Pittsburgh Steelers, there were those who wore number 27 and then there were those who heckled them. And the commissioner of football is caught in the middle of the whole thing and I don't understand that he didn't know what was going on, but again, there are those who say this is their problem and nothing should be done and people should keep quiet about it and then there are others who say no this is something that even the commissioner of football should certainly have been involved in but we're in two different camps instead of looking at the real issue of domestic violence violence in our society and the help that people need to get over their anger and to get over their violent ways. We're in the 21st century and this is something I thought about we're still talking about FIRSTS, F-I-R-S-T-S, FIRSTS in our society. The first female Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. The first Hispanic to coach a National Football League team, the Carolina Panthers, a man named Ron Rivera. By the way, he went to school with one of my sons. He's a fine individual. The first Afro-American president, Barack Obama. The first openly gay man to be drafted by a national football team, Michael Sam, drafted by St. Louis Carter, or St. Louis Rams. And who knows? In a couple of years, maybe we will have the first female president. That's not a political statement. 
I, I read about a man who had a car that was, he would, he would go out to start the car and he never knew whether or not the car was going to run. So he named the car Hillary. <laughs> I don't have time to think about that. <laughs> I hope we can, one day I pray that we can get over these first and just say, this person be the person, male, female, elderly or young or black or white or whatever the person's sexuality may be or whatever and just look at the individual. was a kingmaker. We don't have kingmakers today. At least I don't think so. And Samuel was told to anoint a son of Jesse. And he chose the little guy. God chose the little guy who became a big guy. Because he saw in David a heart that loved the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.